What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and uh, today we have another couple of service calls. Seems like all of y'all are really liking uh, going out in the field with me. So today we have three service calls that we're going to cover. The first service call is a repeat uh, service call. So I went out to this customer's house. They kept reporting that they were having power outages and it seemed like it was the whole house, but they weren't sure if it was just the lighting. They didn't check all the plugs, all that jazz. So the first time that I went out there, which was not today, this was a couple weeks ago, there was a Zinsco main that was a 50 amp Zinsco main that was really old. That was the first thing that I noticed. And I'm like, all right, I'm like 90% positive that that is the problem. But because there's so many loose terminations, everywhere. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten every single one of these while I've got all the panels open anyways. And I don't have a replacement breaker on me in my van. So I would have to get that and come back for another visit anyway. So I was like, all right, I think a good thing to do would just be to say, look, let's try well, there's a, there's a few things that, that could be the problem. Let's just knock uh, each one of them off the list. So the first thing I did was just take care of all of the, the tightening of all of the different terminations on the breakers and feeders and service entrance conductors. And I told her, I'm probably going to have to come back for a breaker because I think the real problem is that old ass breaker from like the sixties or seventies. But I said, I don't want to just go buy a breaker and then put it in. And then we still have a problem. So I would rather, if it saves you some money, I would rather just tighten all of these terminations and then leave and see if that takes care of the problem. And in the meantime, I will source a breaker. Uh, Connecticut Electric actually makes replacement breakers and I can get a replacement breaker for this if the problem still persists. So I set my calendar, I set like a little uh, notification alarm for two weeks out. And I was like, in the next two weeks, you know, she's saying that this is happening like every day, every other day. So if we go two weeks and there's not a problem, then I know just tightening all of the terminations solved the problem. So we went two weeks. I called her back, no problems, I haven't heard anything. So I was like, all right, cool. That was the problem. That Zinsco breaker is probably gonna be replaced pretty soon anyways, but at least I didn't like overcharge her for something unnecessary, right? Well, I shit you not, the next day she calls me and she's like, hey, power went out again. <laughs> I was like, fuck. All right, well, I will be out there tomorrow. So today I'm going out and I open everything back up. Um, I, I'm suspect of this breaker for sure. This old Zinsco breaker, uh, it looked decrepit. It looked all worn on the bottom. And, uh, so I went and got one of these Connecticut electric actually makes brand new replacement breakers. So if you're ever in a situation like this, don't go use like the old shit that you're ripping out of other houses. I know I used to do it too. A lot of electricians do. They'll just hang on to these really old kind of like rare breakers because in that weird situation where you're out in the middle of the boondocks and like you need to come up with one of these breakers, you've got one in your van or in your truck, but they actually make brand new ones. So in this case, I didn't want to just put something old and shitty and then she just keep having problems with it. So I went and got a brand new breaker. She had a two pole 50, which was a skinny two pole 50. I had a, a fat two pole 50 and I knew either one would work in the situation that I had, but, um, I knew going into it that that was what I was going to need. So I went to home Depot and got one really easy. You can also go to bigelectricsupply.com and get them. Um, I actually have a link in the description below. If you just want to order some, uh, code electrician, you gets you a discount off of them. So check that in the link description below. Um, so I put this new breaker in, it was very easy. Just rip the other one out, put the new one in, put it in place. Um, nothing else about the system changed. I had already gone and done all the changes in the termination. So I knew at this point I had checked everything from this main forward through the system. And she was saying it was everything in the house that was shutting off. It wasn't just a couple of circuits or a couple of lights. It was happening throughout the entire house. So I knew that it was something at the service. I didn't, I knew it wasn't something at like a sub panel or at a plug or a switch um, because it was affecting the entire house. So I felt pretty confident about that. But I did tell her when I was leaving, I was like, look, there, there is a slight possibility that this is not the problem either. Um, I think that it is, but you know, I don't know that you're not like losing a phase every once in a while and there's something wrong inside your meter or something weird like that. So I was like, let's just monitor it again. Another two weeks goes by. Uh, I'll check in with you and we'll see how everything's working. And if there's no problems, then I feel good uh, that that was, that was the problem. So sometimes that you don't have like a clear answer, right? As, as service techs uh, in the electrical field, 
um, or, you know, plumbing HVAC. Like we're always going into environments that are like weird shits happening. Most of the time when we get there, it's not there anymore. You know, so we're like chasing down an unknowns and chasing down a ghost and we're taking stories from people and their advice and trying to figure out kind of do detective work. Um, so this is a perfect situation like that where I didn't really know I wasn't able to replicate the problem. I was just trusting their word. Um, but I think that I solved the problem. All right. So uh, after that job. Um, I went down the road. I actually had like an hour and a half drive ahead of me. This was on the complete other side of town for jobs like that, where it's like really far away. I have a, um, a trip charge that I charge for every trip that I take anywhere. It's just extra margin that I build in profitability, but it covers a lot of the vehicle expenses. So I typically charge within 30 miles of where my shop is. Uh, I charge a $50 trip charge. And if it's anything more than that, I charge a hundred dollar trip charge. Um, so this was in a situation where it was an hour and a half away. It was probably like 46 miles or something like that. Um, but it was a, a double trip charge. So, uh, just because of the distance, typically I don't like to work this far away from home just cause it's a pain in the ass to like have to drive that far back and forth every single day. Plus we're talking like way out in the middle of nowhere and in, the, the, in like central Texas and the hill country, there's no supply houses around. There's no home depots or anything around. So it's really just a pain in the ass. So I kind of charge a lot too drive from way out here to go way out there and uh, a lot of people would ask like why wouldn't they just hire somebody local well way out in the sticks a lot of places they don't have very good electricians or very many electricians or they'll call and get somebody that says they're going to show up and they don't show up so there's just a lot of shitty people out in the sticks you know what i mean uh i'm from the sticks i don't judge it's all right you know what i mean like <laughs> i come from the same farm country stock i get it uh, but a lot of the times they will call us in the city to come drive out there. So anyways, I just charge extra for that. So this job uh, was out at a school. So I went to an elementary school, um, like a pre-K kind of thing. But they're getting ready for school to be back in session. And they, uh, the call that I got was from an AC company. So an HVAC company had the contract with the school to put a whole bunch of new air handlers and air compressors in. So all the ACs outside, all the air handlers in this entire building, there was 12 of them, uh, 12 of each. So it's a really big job for them, but they get everything open and they start realizing there's no grounds to anything. So none of the air handlers had a ground conductor. It was just two hots and pipe and all of the air compressors that were outside, same thing, two grounds and pipe. There was no equipment grounds. Now that's an approved wiring method. What these people did was used the conduit, the electrical metallic tubing EMT. They ran straight from the panel to one of these air handlers. They did the same thing. Um, they actually did rigid for the uh, compressors outside, um, but they used that conduit as the ground. So can we do that or can we not do that? Now, if we open up uh, 250 in Article 250 of the National Electric Code, that's what uh, grounding and bonding is. Specifically in Part 6, Part VI, Roman numeral VI is 6. Um, that's where it talks about the types of equipment grounding conductors that we can use. So you don't always have to use an actual conductor for your equipment grounding conductor. You can use other things. So um, it says in 250.118 types of equipment grounding conductors. The equipment grounding conductor run with or enclosing the circuit conductors. Enclosing the circuit conductors means a conduit or a raceway. Shall be one or more of the combination of the following. Either a copper, aluminum, copper cloud, aluminum conductor, um, solid or stranded, insulated or bare. Number two, rigid metal conduit. So the compressors outside that were running rigid metal conduit, as long as all your couplings and everything are fine and you've got a really tight connection, it's actually an approved means of, of having an equipment grounded conductor be the conduit itself. Um, then you have number three, intermediate metal conduit, and number four, electrical metallic tubing. Now it keeps going five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You can read through all of that if you want to figure out the different types of like MC and raceways and everything that they're considering an equipment grounding means. Um, but the problem in this situation is that we have a whole bunch of conduits and couplings that over the years, probably since the sixties has been remodeled and things moved around and it's way out in BFE. So this is like no codes, no inspections for years and years and years and people doing more work and hack work and adding on and taking away from systems. 
half the male adapters were not even in the disconnects. They, there was no lock ring. They were just like hanging there and there were conductors. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff like, um, you know, like just broken uh, jacketed MCs hanging all over the place. Nobody used bat wings to support or, or secure any conduits or anything. So like the continuity of the actual conduit being an effective ground fault means was not there at all. So that's the part with EMT. You actually have to have tight couplings. You have to have everything solid for the entire run. So it is all one piece bonded together so that every coupling and an enclosure and conduit raceway, everything is all touching. That's how you can have EMT actually be an equipment grounding conductor. But if you lose a coupling connection, you just lost the effective means from the load out there through the conduit all the way back to the other one. There's a break in the conduit, so it's not going to work for an equipment ground. So in all, in all reality, while yes, code says that you can use EMT in this environment, they had lost almost all of their grounds to almost all of the equipment. So they called me in and uh, they're like, what can we do about this? Can we just go and like tighten all the couplings and connectors? And I'm like, I think the better method is to add a conductor. Like to me personally, I just like conductor dependent equipment grounding. That's the means in which I like to wire things. You can absolutely have just gone and, and redone all the couplings, the fittings, everything traced out all of that conduit everywhere to see every single junction box everywhere that it goes. I didn't want to do that. I was like, no, I'm just going to get some new metal flex and I'm going to get some new ground, some number 10 ground. I went and sure made sure that, you know, I sized everything correctly for the loads. And I just ran new dedicated grounds from the panel to each piece of equipment all the way through the entire thing. And I did it myself. It took me two trips to go out there. Um, I didn't work full days either day. I just had a lot of other stuff going on. But for me, it's such an easy job. Um, I was able to charge a lot for that job being that it was out in the middle of nowhere and it was for a school district and it was a time sensitive thing um, because kids were coming back. So they were just willing to pay to make sure that it was done, but it was done right. By the end of it, everything was grounded properly. All right. So the last job for the day uh, was a uh, job back in town, back closer to my studio. Um, this was a woman that had called, uh, got my name from a recommendation from somebody else, another electrician. Uh, that just didn't have time to get to this job and she needed a light fixture that she said <laughs> her husband said was like a 40 foot extension ladder i'm like 40 feet like what the fuck kind of light is that do i need a 40 foot extension ladder that's a chandelier you know like where is this and they're like well it's outside on the front patio i'm like 40 feet for a front patio like I've done a lot of really high upscale homes i've never seen a 40 foot entryway to a house this is a fucking castle. Um, so anyways, I just went out there uh, and I brought a typical extension ladder because I was like, people often dramatize their footage. Uh, a lot of fishermen's stories out there. You know, like I'm, I'm like, this is probably a 12 foot fucking chandelier and they just don't know what 40 feet means. So I get out there and sure as shit, it's just like a simple two story house and it was 18 feet. <laughs> so like, all right, my extension ladder is going to work just fine. Um, so I changed that out while I was there. They're like, Hey, we just also bought a whole bunch of interior like vanity sconces that we want changed out too. Um, so I changed a whole bunch of them. There was a back patio light that they tried to have me change out, but they got the wrong fixture. So I wasn't able to do anything with it. This was a great day. Just three service calls, super easy. I was able to do everything on my own. Um, didn't need a helper for anything. And it was just a chill day that all day long I could have my ear pods in and blare music and uh that was pretty much it that was the whole day now one thing to bring up this is kind of a fun fact slash safety time uh i long time ago put a extension ladder on a rug many of you know where this is going <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I've done some stupid shit, okay? Uh, I say it often. I don't hide from it. I've done some stupid shit. Uh, I was at this dude's house, really nice house, like $4 million house. And I was on an extension ladder and they had a huge entryway. Like you get inside the house and there's this big fucking entryway. It's huge ass chandelier. 
and I get my extension ladder in there and they've got this big circle rug on wood floor. <laughs> and I put this fucking extension ladder right in the middle of that thing and I leaned up on the wall and I'm feeling you know, great about what I'm doing. I get all the way up there and I start messing with something and I start to feel like I'm getting shorter and I'm like sliding down and the ladder starts sliding down the wall and the fucking rug started sliding back. So the whole ladder just went and fell on the ground and I grabbed onto a second story windowsill and I was hanging from the fucking ladder because I put the bottom of the ladder on a rug and that fucking rug slid. So that's your safety time for the day. Don't ever put extension ladders on rugs. This job, it actually made me laugh my ass off because the first thing I did when I set my extension ladder up, there was a welcome mat and I put it right on there and I looked at that thing and I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> and I pulled that thing and threw it away. And I was like, I got to talk about this in the video. So here you go. That was your safety time. Don't put extension ladders on rugs because they will slide. So uh, that's all I got. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, make sure that you uh, subscribe if you guys follow this channel, if you watch all these videos and you actually like it, help a brother out. Like it really matters to me that you guys actually like the videos and hit the little like thing that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're a channel member. If you actually like have questions and you want to reach out to me and text me, there's like a whole thing. You can have my phone number and I sit and text all you crazy people. You have your weird questions. Let's go into the, the, the questions. Let me see what some of these people have asked. Some people just want advice about like, Hey, I'm moving to the area. Like, do you know where I can find a place to work? Other people, um, just have some funny, <laughs> funny memes to send me. That's the shit I love the most when the people send me like silly ass pictures of stuff. Uh, people ask about code questions all the time. How do I wire a manual transfer switch? Did I wire this right? They send like pictures and drawings and then I can actually draw on their drawing and be like, no, I would run this like this. Um, but it's kind of cool. So if you want to have that kind of interaction with me, um, join the channel membership, become a thousand volt member and you get your name on screen all these cool people, uh, get their names on screen. Um, but yeah, so, uh, hit the notification bell. Let's you know every time I have an episode practice exams on the website, electricianu.com all that jazz. Love you crazy people. Thank you so much for your constant support. Thanks for listening to me talk for uh, forever. Uh, love you people and I'll see you soon. Best music and video.